Hey folks, this is Jake with Seattle Coffee Gear, and today we've got another crew comparison here. We've got the Philips 3200 Latte Go and the Philips 4300 Latte Go. While they may sound similar, these machines definitely have some key differences which may or may not affect, you know, which machine you like better. So let's start with the 3200. This is the first Latte Go machine that was released from Philips here in the United States, and it is a wonderful machine. What it has is uh, 12 grind settings, a 10 ounce capacity hopper, a 1.8 liter water tank, and uh, many, many options for you to choose from to make your morning routine. It has the Latte Go craft system, which is the same that the 4300 has. It is basically a new style of siphon carafe, which makes excellent drinks and it makes them hot and it makes them really fast and it makes cleanup really, really, really easy. Just rinse it out uh, and basically put it back and that's all you gotta do to get these crafts cleaned up a lot easier than the old siphon systems. You get five drink choices on the Latte Go. You get espresso, you get coffee, you get Americano, you get cappuccino, you get a latte macchiato, and then you also have hot water here for when you want to make, you know, hot tea or hot cocoa or something like that. You have three strength choices, which affects how much, how many, basically the amount of beans within your drink. The lowest setting is right around six grams. The highest setting is right around 10 grams. Depends on your grind size, but it does have a flexible range. You get drink settings um, in terms of volume, which it depends on the drink you select. Basically, you are maxed out at right around seven, 7.4 ounces for the longest drink. It just saves on the pump life. Um, and you can always do the times two drink to get um, more than seven and a half ounces out. And then you get the milk froth amount here. The machine is AquaClean compatible and it has a descaling um, calc clean button here that will light up once the machine is ready to be descaled. Now onto the 4300 Latte Go. This is a newer model here in the United States for the Latte Go. And there's a few key improvements over the 3200 that make this machine a lot more user friendly, as well as being a lot more um, diverse and versatile in your morning routine. The first thing that you may notice here is the screen right in the center. There is a screen here. Instead of using indicator lights, this machine uses a screen to display the information, the drink selection, and it's how you select um, from the many options from within the screen. You also have profiling, which is unique to the uh, 4300 series compared to the 3200 in that you can choose from a blue profile, a green profile, or a guest profile for guests that you may have over. What these profiles do is each time you make a drink, it will save to the profile that you have selected all the parameters like the amount of milk froth, the strength, the actual amount of coffee that is dispensed. And that will be saved for next time so that you can make sure that the next coffee that you make or the next cappuccino is gonna be exactly the same. And it gives you a lot more flexibility. You know, if you prefer your drink one way, someone else in your household prefers your drink another way, it's a really easy thing to set it and forget it and just have a easier morning routine. The 4300 has uh, a few more drink choices than the 3200. It has espresso, it has coffee, it has Americano, cappuccino, a latte macchiato, uh, a cafe a la, which is actually just a coffee with milk, and it dispenses the milk in uh, the opposite order that the other milk drinks do. And you have more drinks here, which is a cafe crema, which is heavy on the milk. You have ristretto, which is a short espresso, and unique to the 4300 Latte Go is you have the milk froth option standalone. So you can make your milk froth for matcha lattes, you can make your milk froth for hot chocolate, anything that you need without having to go through the workaround that we have found works okay on the 3200, which is using the pre-ground slot, pouring out the water, and then getting the milk froth. Phillips did a really great job by having this standalone in this machine, uh, which makes it really convenient. No more hot water wasted or spilling all over the place. This machine is also AquaClean compatible. Same 12 grind settings, the same water tank. Basically everything in the core of the machine is the same, but the screen and how it interacts with the machine is uh, a little bit different. So you have the same 1.8 liter water tank, 10 ounce capacity here, same drag door, uh, capacity here, and the same exact Latte Go carafe. A couple of other things to note on the 4300 is you have a cleaning menu, 
which is really nice because it enables you to do a quick rinse. You can do a deeper brew group clean using a uh, tablet in the bypass doser. You can go through descaling here, and it's also the way that you set up your AquaClean filters, and it has an indicator for how many you have used before the machine needs to be descaled. That's compared to the AquaClean indicator here, which is basically blue when it's good, flashing orange when it's ready to be replaced, and then the CalcClean will light up when you run through your eight or nine filters before descaling. That makes cleaning on the 4300. Uh, it does make it a lot more convenient because you can just do a quick rinse right then and there. In this machine, you certainly can do it, um, but it is a little bit simpler um, to have those options stand alone if you just want to give it, you know, a rinsing anytime that option is available to you. You also have an easier way to get into your settings here. The 3200 Latte Go is a little bit more difficult. There's basically like a command of buttons that you hit, um, which can be found all in the manual. It's pretty well laid out, but for changing something like temperature and changing the water hardness, they're all commands of buttons that you do by pressing the power button and pressing a, the coffee strength button or by adjusting different combinations of buttons. But on the 4300, this is all laid out for you nice and simple in the menu. You have water hardness, you have standby time, screen brightness, you can change the language of the screen, and it is available in English, Italian, uh, German, French, Spanish, Portuguese, and uh, quite a few other languages that are um, all in this machine. You get Chinese, Korean, lots of different languages. Um, so if you, know, if you have someone that speaks a different language, this is really nice because the screen can be translated into that. You have feedback on the button sounds. You do have this as well on the 3200, but again, it's one of those button combinations. Here, you can just set it right here on and off. Temperature, we have, uh, I'm gonna set this to high or maximum, but you can set it to low, medium, high right here from the screen. And unique to this machine, which the Latte Go doesn't have, or the 3200 Latte Go does not have, is the number of each drink that have been made through the machine. There's no total amount, but this is just a nice thing to see for kind of what maybe your most popular drink in the household is, or just knowing the total number of drinks if you add them all up, um, just to get a good consensus of how much the machine has been used. And you have a support button, which gives you a QR code for Philips support, as they do cover this machine's warranty initially. Uh, factory reset, and you can switch the units from the factory. It's set at milliliters. And I actually have this already set up in ounces because I find that easier to use for myself. Um, and I know, I know a lot of people at home will find ounces easier to use. So it's nice that you have the option to switch between those. So these machines being um, at the core similar, but at the screen level and with the nice stainless steel here on the 4300, they are, um, you know, they're kind of brothers, I would say, maybe more cousins um, than brothers, but I would say that this is just the, not more um, upgraded model, but perhaps just a little bit more feature-filled model, the 4300. Whereas the 3200 makes the same excellent drink quality right at home, but is just a little bit simpler to, to use with less buttons, which good or bad, depending on exactly what you want at home. I have actually found that even though there are more buttons and there is a screen on the 4300, the design of the buttons and the availability of cleaning and settings does make it more user-friendly and more intuitive for the average person at home. Um, the additional options of scrolling I've just found are, are way more easy to use than the um, three selection of buttons here. It's more laid out you see exactly how much you're getting out. So if I go on to a cappuccino, you can see 1.4 ounces and I have 3.4 ounces of milk. So you know exactly how much your drink is gonna be rather than kind of having to guesstimate based on what you've programmed into this machine. And so with that being said, um, we're actually gonna have a race with these machines. I'm gonna get them restarted and shut off and we're gonna start them from fresh and we're going to go into brewing and exactly how we um, these machines compare against each other. And we'll see you in just a moment. All right, because both these machines are so similar in terms of their actual performance, we wanted to do a little bit of a test 
just to see some real world um, performance like you'd be making coffee right in the morning. Both these machines are, they have not been warmed up, they have not been rinsed, they are exactly how you would find them in the morning, you know, before you brew your morning cappuccino or Americano. And we're basically gonna have a race. I'm gonna turn on both these machines at the same time and we're gonna allow them to warm up. We're gonna allow them to rinse into these Bodum mugs right here. I'm gonna remove the rinse water and I'm gonna make myself a cappuccino from each of these as quickly as possible. We're gonna make the cappuccino as small in terms of volume as possible and at the highest strength so that I do have to go through the parameters on each one. And I'm gonna be doing both machines at the exact same time. So uh, here we go, wish me luck. All right, so I've got both the machines started and the 4300 has the heating up symbol. The 3200 has just the revolving lights to show you that it's heating up. So they're both um, heating up right now and we'll see which one is a little bit quicker to start the rinse cycle. All right, so the 4300 is rinsing right now, so it has an early lead. 3200 still rinsing, or still heating up, excuse me. So it is, um, 4300 is ahead. And it sounds like the 3200 is rinsing now. So just a few seconds behind, but definitely a little bit slower. I'm gonna remove the rinse water from the 4300 because it sounds like it is almost ready to go. Cappuccino, minimum volume, max strength, and start. And now the 3200 is finally ready to go, so I'm going to do cappuccino, maximum strength, minimum volume, and start. So the milk is dispensing on the 4300 now. And now it's on the 3200. It sounds like we're just about to start brewing on the 4300 here. Yep, here we go. And that's time for the 4300. So it is all done, ready to go. And time on the 3200. That was quite the race. Uh, the 4300 definitely had just a little bit of an edge. It seems to warm up a little bit faster. Uh, it may be a little bit more powerful in that regard in terms of just the computer inside. Um, but it does look like the 4300 was just uh, a few seconds ahead. So let's give these a taste, compare. This is the 4300 and the 3200. Yeah, both really good. One, one interesting thing to note is that the milk froth on the 3200 does seem actually warmer. We do have these both set to the same temperature setting. Uh, they're the maximum temperature setting. And we've got the same beans, Bubora's Cotidiano blend, and we've got the same grind. So everything else should be the same. But 3200's milk does seem warmer, almost, almost too hot which we have heard from some of our customers and fans of this machine that the milk does come out quite hot. It's not scaldingly so, but the 4300s actually seems like it's a little bit cooler. But the drink itself is not cold. They both are ultimately delicious. Um, just this one is a little bit warmer and it seems like it's actually from the milk froth and not the espresso itself. 
Yeah, ultimately, both are really, really good, and they make fantastic drinks. Very similarly, just the 4300 is a little bit quicker. So after all that comparison, the differences between these machines may be slight with the 4300 having a little bit of an edge in the speed department, and it definitely has an edge in usability along with the milk froth uh, option here, the standalone milk froth option for your hot chocolate or for anything like that. The 3200, a little bit simpler, but some people may enjoy that. You know, there's only a few buttons on the screen. There's lots of different um, drinks that you can make on both these machines with the 4300 having just a slight edge, but the 3200 is simpler. There's only about eight buttons, nine buttons. Um, so that is a nice machine to have on hand if you just want something simple to make a delicious latte. They both have different uses, both really great machines. And at the end of the day, you can't go wrong with either of them. It's kind of more just what you want in your morning routine. And if you have, you know, guests or family um, in your house that enjoy different drinks, the 4300 may pull that edge with the profiling. So I want to thank you so much for watching. And don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And we'll see you next time. Okay. Yes.